Hello and welcome back to the Welsh Premiership podcast. And uh, as you can see, myself and Tobias uh, are joined by a new uh, presenter this week, uh, Zach Johnson Peon. Uh, Zach, uh, nice to have you on in Ads Play. It's great to be here. Thank you very much. So, uh, yeah, today we'll be looking back, uh, um, not, not last weekend, but the weekend before, and the final round of games in the pool stages of the Welsh Prem Cup, uh, previewing the quarterfinals for that as well, and looking ahead to the start of the regular league season uh, this weekend. So, um, before we get into that, I just want to thank our sponsors again, uh, Lekka Foods Co. Uh, as you know by now, they're sponsoring uh, these videos for us, and uh, which is good, allows us to get, get more coverage of games and get more people out there. So, uh, yeah, we'll look back uh, to the last round of games in the Welsh Prem Cup then. And, uh, Zach, I know you went to uh, Newport v Abervale. So can you tell us a little bit about that and what happened in that game? Well, I thought Newport were, were exceptional. They had a great idea of what they were doing. They were great behind the set piece, uh, notably after lineouts. Their malls are so, so efficient. I think they scored like five of their seven tries from malls after a lineout in, in Abervale's 22. And yeah, they just had a clear idea of, of how to set up tactically. It was simple rugby, direct and frontal, but very, very efficient. And uh, was there any players that stood out for you in that game? I think their whole pack really is their strength. Um, they're, they're very, very powerful. And yeah, when, when Newport's pack sort of show up, they're going to dictate the game. Yeah, and you know, you're speaking about Newport there. How far now do you think they can go in the Premiership campaign? Um, I think if they keep it up, they can they can do very very well in the Premiership. I wouldn't be surprised if they're up there, uh, looking for the title by the end of the season. And uh, just a quick word on Ebba Vale Then obviously they've had a quite a disappointing Premiership Cup, finishing bottom of the Eastern Conference. Do you think with the the regular Premiership season starting this weekend, it'll be a chance for them to sort of reset and uh, sort of focus on a new competition? Well, I spoke to some of the Ebba Vale, um members uh, after the game and they said they've had a lot of injuries this year they've been playing a lot of youngsters so if they can get some of the more usual players back into the squad and now the youngsters have got some experience from playing in the cup this season I think they'll be able to regain form once they, they get into the, the Premiership season but it might be tough for them because of the level the other teams have, have, gotten, have gotten to now but yeah I'm pretty sure they'll, they'll do better than they did in the cup Moving on then to the, the other game in the Eastern Conference. And uh, surprisingly, Merthyr come away from the Arms Park with a big 45-29 victory. Uh, Tobias, uh, were you expecting that one? I'll be honest with you. and uh, I don't think I was. You know, Cardiff going into it, battling with Newport, no, no win could have topped the group from. But, um, you know, credit to Merthyr. You know, they, they, I think they were guaranteed third place. wasn't much to play for for them. But, you know, they came out away from home at the Arms Park. And they put in terrific performance and I think they deserved the win in the end. You know, it's credit to Dale McIntosh, you know, and the rest of his coaching staff for um, the way maybe Merthyr have improved the last few weeks because they did struggle to start the campaign. But, um, yeah, it's a big result for them and it's going to carry them in good stead going into the league now as well. Yeah, and I know, Zach, you've seen Cardiff and Merthyr play uh, this season. Obviously, you didn't see that game. But uh, what have you made of those two sides uh, this year? Um well, I saw Merthyr at Sardis Road and then uh, at their at their own ground against Pontypridd both times. And the first game against Pontypridd in the first half, they looked like the the more well rounded team. They lost to a comeback from Pontypridd for who who really made a push in the second half. The second game, they absolutely obliterated them. But like Pontypridd scored a lot of tries. It was it was very free flowing. It was a very enjoyable game to watch. But I think they put sixty points past them. So they've been uh, impressive. From time to time, they've just lacked a bit of consistency. And Cardiff, from what from what I've seen of them, um, it's weird because it's clear that they they might be the best team in the Premiership this season, at least on paper. But they struggle to string things together. I, I like to think back to the game against Ebervale where they had a, a tough first half where they drop a lot of balls and they they struggle to really make any any ground forward. But then once they got, got things kicking on, they got they they just improved massively and. I managed to dominate games. So, surprised Merthyr won by such a wide margin in Cardiff. But then again, Cardiff were insured a place in the top two. So, I'm not sure they'll be too too worried by that loss. Yeah, and uh, obviously, we had uh, Spencer O'Connell uh, went to that game. So, uh, here you can listen to me and Tobias catch up with Spencer and uh, get his thoughts on the game. Uh, Spencer, I know you went down to the uh, Arms Park to watch uh, Cardiff take on Merthyr on the weekend. What were your overall thoughts on the game? 
Yeah, I've got to be honest, it was a it was a brilliant game to watch, you know, for any rugby fan. Um, it was end to end rugby all throughout. And, you know, on a cold November's day, you'd expect some slow rugby being played and a forward dominated game. But that, that wasn't the case, to be honest. It was um yeah, it was it was a great spectacle and like some great handling on show. So overall, just well, yeah, a twelve try game. So a great game to go and watch and cover. Yeah, and I know obviously Cardiff are going in as favourites, looking the top spot in the league and that. So how impressive would Merthyr come away with a big win like that? Yeah, well, that's what I thought, to be honest. I, you know, I was really impressed with Cardiff, um, but I was way more impressed with with Merthyr's all-round ability, if I'm honest. You know, they, they come in, I know it's only 20 minutes on the road, but, you know, they're, they're still away. You know, they, they haven't got their, their home comforts. And i got to be honest, all, all around, they, they, they were bang on. Um, so yeah, I was I was very impressed with especially I think their pack. I think you know their pack goals. We know how strong they are up front, but I think I was really more impressed by how the pack could shift the ball. You know, how, how they they wasn't just focused on carrying that ball up. Obviously, you're playing on you know, the four G, which obviously means the speed of ball is going to be quicker. And I think Merthyr adapted to that very well. You know, they were able to you know shift the ball out wide, and yeah, it was I, that's from what I was most impressed with, if I'm honest. Yeah, and obviously both teams are going to be moving on to the playoffs then, which are going to play be played um, in March next year. Um, obviously, Merthyr will be will be obviously uh, take a lot of confidence out of that game. But do you think uh, Cardiff will sort of be a little wake up call for them going into the league season and then those playoffs as well? I think so. Yeah, I think you know obviously we all know how, how strong Cardiff can be, um, and I think maybe they came into that game, you know, just you know a bit playing with comfort if you ask me and yeah I think it will be a wake up call to them and I think you know going forward I'm sure they'll get back to you know their winning ways uh, I did notice they had a few youngsters out on the pitch so obviously that's you know a lot of teams are doing that at the minute and that's that's going to help them benefit them down the line so hopefully you know coming towards their March games um, Cardiff will them youngsters you know will have more experience again so I think yeah, I think there'll be a wake-up call for them, but I don't think they got much to worry about because, like I say, they never they never took a backward step really from the game until the last ten minutes, really. So yeah, I think it will be a wake-up call, and I think it'll be a bit harder on them in training. And but overall, I, I don't think Cardiff got too much to worry about going forward. Yeah, and there was quite a few names as well from the game in our team of the week. But who are some of the standout players for you? Um, for me, uh, I think you have to look at probably Merthyr's squad. Um, so for me, it was obviously the nine, Justin James. I think he had he had an outstanding game. He bagged himself a try, but he just ran he just ran the match all round. Um, and then he's right that man as well, Gareth Thompson. You know, in windy conditions like that, it's quite easy for an outside half to miss to miss any conversion. And uh, to be honest, he was he was bang on off the tee, and uh, yeah, he converted the first of the game and converted the last. So it says it all really. Um, and then another one I would like to mention is um, Prop Oliver Reese. You know, he he played he played full HD, um, and that takes a lot of going for for any uh, prop, as we know. So yeah, them, them three players probably my standout players of the week. So um, yeah, the final table in the uh, Eastern Conference. Then Newport, obviously, with their uh, big win, they stayed top. And uh, Cardiff, even if they had have managed to beat a Merthyr, they wouldn't have been able to overtake them with Newport winning that. So obviously Cardiff losing to Merthyr, they stayed in second. Merthyr stayed in third, which is uh, pretty much, they, they was guaranteed that anyway, even with that win. And then, uh, yeah, fourth and fifth spot, the match between RGC and uh, Pontypridd was uh, was cancelled due to player safety concerns. So uh, that bit game has been rescheduled for the 8th of January now. Um, that's going to be a massive uh, game. What are your thoughts on that one, boys? Yeah, it's going to be a weird one now because I think going into it, I thought RGC maybe would have probably gone in favourites and and then come out with our win to secure the quarter final spot. But um, you know, there's a new campaign coming up. They have a couple of weeks now, you know, to get going again in, in the league and in the lead up to our game. It'll be an interesting one, no doubt. I think it will still be a close game, but yeah, but I think it's, it's tough to call at the minute. We'll have to see how both sides start in in the new league now. And Zach, I know you've been you've been doing some stuff for Ponte. So, uh, yeah, do you think they'll be able to pip RGC and get that last place? I think playing in Colwyn Bay is always quite difficult. But um, the first game was incredible. I mean, it was a, a back and forth affair, and it was like forty thirty eight to Ponte Priv, uh, who managed to take the lead in the in the last in the last minute in dying moments. So, I think both teams will will want to qualify, obviously. And uh, RGC may have the little 
supplement uh, because of the fact they lost by such a close margin in the first leg. But it will definitely be an exciting game and it's it's going to be decisive. So it's basically a round of 16 game where well, it is a round of 16 game for both teams. So it's a must win. And so I think they'll both come out guns blazing. Yeah, and uh, as we mentioned before there, Nebervale, with a disappointing loss to Newport, they finished uh, a last place in the Premiership Cup. So uh, they'll be targeting a big uh, regular Premiership season now, having missed out on the quarterfinals for that. So uh, moving across to the uh, Western Conference then, and uh, we'll start with the big clash at the top. Uh, Llandovery obviously coming away with a victory against uh, Aberavon, uh, which meant they leapfrogged them to top spot. Uh, Tobias, what are your thoughts on that one? Yeah, I'll be honest... What a quality game. I think the quality of rugby both sides produced. You know, obviously I wasn't there, but I've, I've watched, you know, I've seen the tries and stuff. And some of the tries scored by both sides were, were outstanding for, for this level of the game. I think Flandovery probably did deserve it overall. But, um, you know, you've got to give respect to Abraham. I think they went a couple of tries up early on as well. You know, you're playing some nice stuff, but fair play, Flandovery. You know, it's, we, we've mentioned it, you know, uh, quite a few times on the pod now. How, how they've built this culture and stuff around the club. And, and you can tell, you know, the way they came back to uh, beat Abraham. And, you know, I, I'd probably say Tlanda, we are the form side in, in the league at the minute now as well. Yeah, as we mentioned before, didn't we? Tlanda have sort of gone under the radar a little bit with Abraham uh, being top for most of the, the league campaign. And then obviously Tlanda then pipped Abraham with that, that big win right on the line. Uh, we mentioned as well Flandovery's, um the strength and depth they've had and how many players they've used throughout the campaign. I think that'll benefit them now going into the, the regular season and, and, of course, the quarterfinals as well. Uh, moving on then to the second game in the Western Conference and uh, Carmarthen Quinns come away 26-15 uh, winners uh, over Tlenetli, which uh, ensured Tlenetli's place at the bottom uh, and Carmarthen finishing in third in the Western Conference then. Uh, what are your thoughts on that one? Yeah, it's it's a scoreline and a game we probably all predicted. If I'm honest, again, you know, Slashy, not a bad performance. Uh, you know, bottom of the table, they are winless at the minute. But you know, they gave they gave a good shift against a strong Carmarthen side. But you know, credit to Carmarthen. You know, the third spot stairs, and, and they obviously wanted a, a, a victory coming into this league campaign now. But I do think Slashy will get better. And, oh, I know they're not playing this weekend, and we'll touch upon that later. But um. You know, I, I think a win is on the way for them this year. It will it'll be sooner rather than later. Yeah, I think they're in a similar situation with Ebervale, really, aren't they? They 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 didn't have the best of Premiership Cup campaigns, but obviously with the new new competition starting now, it's a it's a really good chance for them to sort of start afresh. And um, I think some of the the experiences that those young players would have learned from playing in the Premiership Cup can only benefit them now moving forward. Uh, moving on to the last game then, and uh, yeah, wasn't this a cracker? Uh, Bridgend coming away, 2013 winners from St. Helens with that last minute try. Uh, Tobias, I know you're uh, quite close to Bridgend, done a lot of stuff for them, so I'll uh, let you explain what happened in that one. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> you know, it was a tight affair, I think, think, all the way through. I think Swansea, Swansea were just edging it about 13 points to 10. You know, Matthew Jones kicked the penalty about 10 minutes from time. To leave scores of 13 all, and then, um, you know, as a result, if it stayed like that, Swansea would have would have qualified. You know, Bridgen needing a win, I think it's about a minute to go, and um, you know, the magic happened when <laughs> Ed Howley, nice half volley, yeah, it was incredible. To be fair. I only saw it on next social media, you know, he headers the ball over the full back and scored. I don't think I've ever seen a try like it, and I ever will see a try like it again. But you know, what a way to send your side into the quarterfinals of the cup. Yeah, so um, obviously myself and Tobias uh, caught up with uh, Yastin Thomas. Uh, Yastin Thomas went to see that game for us as well. And uh, yeah, so here's us uh, talk to him about the game and uh, a bit more about that Ed Howley magic try. So uh, Yastin, I know you uh, went down to St. Helens on the weekend to watch uh, Swansea v Bridgend and it was a massive game. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about like what happened? Yeah, so um, game kicked off, got very, very cagey in the opening quarter before... Uh... Bridgend got the opening score with uh, Cameron Ellis uh, scoring off the back of some good play by Ed Howley. That won't be the first time I say good play by Ed Howley. Uh, then um, Swansea got back into it to the try from Munger, Lian Morgan, who would nearly got over again if it wasn't for a try saver from uh, Howley. Then uh, in the second half, it got a bit, bit more 
uh, in Swansea's favour with a couple of couple of breaks. Morgan uh, nearly scored from 80 metres, actually, which could have been uh, a fantastic effort, but uh, he was just brought short, just short of the line. And then, um, and then obviously that moment of magic that we've all seen by Ed Howley that won the game for Bridgend. Yeah, and obviously he was there, watched the game. What was you thinking when uh, Howley went through and headed that ball? Um, many of the Swansea uh, faithful thought it was a knock on, as uh, obviously not many people knew about Lee header in an actual egg si- egg shaped rugby ball. So uh, obviously very interesting. I just thought it was a brilliant piece of skill, brilliant piece of play, and uh, it was well deserved the five points to uh, finish it off. And what was the reaction like from the Bridgend boys? Because I, I, you can see uh, Nash following all the way, telling him to put the ball down. Obviously, he put, put the ball down really late as well, didn't he? Yeah, it was a bit touch and go to see if the if the ball actually grown did or he went dead. But uh, yeah, they were delighted. Harvey Nash, especially, he was delighted when the when they eventually grounded the ball. And uh, well, the Bridgend supporters were, I don't think they could believe what they were seeing. Yeah, and uh, obviously this result now means Bridgend are through to the quarterfinals of the Cup. What do you make of their chances? I know it's Newport away, they draw. Yeah, Newport away is obviously going to be tricky for them as they've played really well in the uh, eastern side. But if Ed Howley and the rest of his side can uh, start headwind things again, then uh, they can go all the way. And so where does that leave Swansea then? Because obviously it leaves them without um, a quarterfinal in the Cup. But they played really well and obviously lost by... Something like that, which you can't really prepare for, like really, can you? So where does that leave them now going into the the normal premiership season? Well, if they can work on creating their chances, they blew a few many a chance at the start of the second half. And obviously not not every side in the in the Prem is going to be head and things. So they could count themselves a little bit unlucky with the uh, with the with the last try. But um they do look in good shape. There's a nice couple of youngsters coming through. Cian Morgan, like I already mentioned, he's been he's been playing very well. But um, if they can just keep making those attacking opportunities work, they can they can definitely do well. Yeah, and I know you mentioned a couple of players like Howley and Cian Morgan. I know you've watched both sides a few times now this year. Are there any other players that stood out for you? Um, Ali Evans at six for Bridgend. I thought he played um, played very well on the uh, on Saturday. He do obviously not as mo- notice as the people in the back line, but uh, he can do a lot of work. And also, both locks did very well, despite uh, two out of the three locks that came on actually got yellow carded. They they both did very well to uh, distribute the uh, line out. And yes, then I know you're an Ospreys fan, and I know there wasn't too many y- youngsters on show in the last game. But how important do you think some of those Ospreys uh, youngsters will be dropping down into both Swansea and Bridgend's team now for the Premiership? Oh, I think it's brilliant to see some of the Osprey's youngsters. Some of them I know more than more than others, as some of them I've, I'm currently in school with. But um, but yeah, it's brilliant to see players coming down to the Welsh Prem. And uh, well, this is what what you really need. You know, it was always through the age grades you play play against people you you know from many years. But getting yourself playing for Bridgend or playing for Swansea or playing for Aberavon, you can. Um, you can test yourself against some really experienced players. London's in the table then, or obviously all apart from RGC Pontypris confirmed. Uh, the quarterfinals will be played in March. So uh, we'll have Newport taking on Bridgend. Flindovery taking on, obviously, the winner of that RGC v Pontypris game. Cardiff taking on Carmarthen and Aberavon taking on Merthyr. Uh, boys, what are your thoughts on the quarterfinal matchups? Yeah, is there some big matchups in there? You know, I think Abraham and Merthyr, I think maybe he's a standout for me. You know, two, two top quality sides. And like we see Merthyr this year on the day, you know, they can cause an upset. And I think that would be an upset. But yeah, the, other than that, I think, you know, Cardiff, strong. Uh, I'd see them coming off against the Queens. You know, the form Newport are in, I don't think anyone would really go against them losing. And yeah, the way Land have really played as well, no matter who they'll play, I think um, they'll be favourites going into it. Yeah, e- echoing what I said. Um, I think Newport are going to be the team to beat, really. If they manage to keep the form they've had throughout the Cup, uh, throughout the now Premiership season, and don't pick up too many injuries, I think they'll definitely be heavy heavy favourites for the, for the title. All right, so uh, looking forward to the start of the Premiership season this weekend then. And uh, the Thursday night games, obviously, 
we're having Thursday night games and there's sort of been a mixed reaction to them. Obviously, a lot of people, it's not their favourite day to go and watch rugby. They prefer to do it on the weekend, obviously. But it's given us the opportunity to have games on uh, on S4C Click again uh, online. Uh, Tobias, what are your thoughts on uh, the, the Thursday night slot for these games? I think for the league is great. I think the exposure it will get, you know, obviously it, it is online, but, you know, being covered it, it is a great start and is what the league deserves, if I'm honest. On the Thursday night slot, probably not the best, but it's understandable. You know, I know a lot of local club rugby is trained on Thursday night, so there will be a bit of a clash there. But then you can understand why the Friday slot is not given them due to, you know, the regional rugby that's going on. But all in all, it's a positive for the league and it's something that a lot of people have been calling calling for for a long time. You know, and it's, it's only going to be better, you know, to build the sides, the league, you know, showcase some of the talent that, that is going on there. And I think it, all in all, it's a good thing. Yeah, obviously you mentioned it does clash with some some club rugby training, but um, I think it's a, there'll be a lot of people as well that if they their team is playing on the Thursday night and they have a club rugby game on the Saturday, it'll give them the opportunity maybe to go and watch on the Thursday. So I think overall it can only be positive. We know the reason it is, is for, for it to be shown on S4C Click. So yeah, I think it, it can only be a positive thing, can't it? Yeah, and I think, like you said, you know, the crowd perspective of it, um, yeah, there's only going to be good crowds. I know it's a Thursday night, it's going to be cold and and so on, but you know, it, you got more time. You could say all these local clubs, maybe that they just all go and watch your local size on Saturday. It was a chance for them, you know, to pop on a Thursday and see some, you know, semi pro Welsh Prem rugby. Yeah, so uh, in the Thursday night night slot this week, then is a is a big game, and we uh, yeah we spoke about obviously the teams merging together now and play the east teams in the East Conference. Sorry, I'll play some of the teams in the West Conference. Uh, it's not what's happening in this first Thursday game. We'll have, we've had a game that we've already seen twice this season. So, uh, Aberavon hosting Swansea. Uh, what are your thoughts on that one? Yeah, I think it's going to go the same way the, the other two games this season went, if I'm honest. You know, I expect every side, I think, in the league now to be, to, to go full strength. You know, I know in the couple of sides, uh, we're looking at rotation and so on. But yeah, I think that every side wants to go out and give this league, you know, try and win it. So, you know, the quality Abraham and have and, and the depth they, they've got on that squad, you, you can only fancy them to come out with a win. But on the other hand, Swansea, I know there'll be a few few youngsters coming back who have played A, a games recently. And they'll they want to put, you know, that defeat against Bridgend the other week. Um, they want to put that right now and, and showcase, you know, what they can do. Yeah, and as we mentioned, obviously, Abraham and coming off the back of that um, tight victor, uh, defeat, sorry, against Clendovery in the last game of the Prem Cup. Do you think uh, that'll give them extra motivation now, given going into the Prem season, to, to not have any any slip-ups early on? Oh, yeah, definitely. And, you know, they they got to target these games against against the size they know they can beat. You know, they've got to get bonus point wins and if they want, want to be up there at the end of the season. Because they, they know Flandovery, you know, beating them twice this year. So so these games against maybe like the lower sides as such, they, they've got to be coming away with, with wins and, you know, bonus points realistically. Moving on to the Saturday games, then. and uh, yeah, we'll have the first uh, West v East clash, uh, Clendovery v RGC. Obviously, Clendovery finishing top of the, the Western Conference, and RGC were yet to see if they go through from from the Eastern Conference. But if they do, interestingly enough, they'll be up against Clendovery in the Prem Cup quarterfinals. So uh, yeah, what are your thoughts on uh, this one? Yeah, it'll be good to see. Interesting, you know, the first time these two will have faced each other this year. Um, two good brands of rugby, you know. Kind of replay some excellent stuff. Um, they they got bound to be going in uh, as favourites, but like we've said over recent weeks, you know the way RGC built from from that sixty point drubbing at the start of the year to what they've come, you know, beating Newport, Newport wins like that. I wouldn't rule RGC out at all. You know, I know they've had a few weeks off now, but the quality that they've got on that side, the way Kerry Jones has gone playing. It'll be a tight game, but I think I'd fancy Clendovery to come away with it. Yeah, obviously, we spoke to Kerry Jones earlier on in the season, didn't we? And he mentioned how he didn't have the best um, preparation going forward into the, the season. Obviously, only took out over um, RGC uh, the week of the first game. So um, they did use it a little bit as a building tool, but you could see the progression um, that they went on week after week, uh, getting better and better. And... Um, 
yeah, I think that'll be a really good game actually down at um, Church Bank in Llandovery because if we have the RGC of sort of two, three seasons ago, we know they can beat beat any team uh, like on their day. So I think that'll be a, a massive game for them. Um, but yeah, obviously Llandovery are the form side in the in the competition at the moment. So it'll be a very interesting game to see. Moving on to the, the second game then, and Merthyr hosting Ebervale at the Wyrm. Uh, Zach, I know you've seen both of these sides play this season, so uh, what are your thoughts on that one? Mm, I think it might be a bit too early for Ebervale to try and target a result. I mean, they'll go there to, to do something, but I think at this point in their development across the season, Merthyr will probably be too much for them. I think Ebervale, they produce some interesting rugby. I mean, they scored a, uh, their only try of the game against Newport was absolutely fantastic. You know, starting off from their from their own twenty two, spreading it wide, all the way to the wing, and then rushing past the defence. So they have the quality there; they just lack the experience. And I think Merthyr will, will capitalise on that. Yeah, and like Sachs mentioned, you know, Ebb have had a lot of youth this season. You know, there'll be a few experienced boys back, but you know, Jason Strange has, has come in now to take up the coaching role. You know, replacing Greg Woods. It'd be interesting to see. How he like how he's gonna go about it, you know the way he's gonna get able playing. But yeah, look, you'll only want to start with the positive. He, he's gonna go there to win, and they will challenge. And you know, Merthyr will be favourites, but it'll be interesting to see the way Ebu playing. I I wouldn't write them off. No, obviously, interestingly enough, in the first game of the the Prem Cup, uh, Ebu Vale beat Merthyr away at the win, didn't they? So that could be a, a sort of good omen for them. And yeah, I think the the thing about Ebervale's rugby, I think early on in the season when they did beat Merthyr and they beat Ponzi at home, they were playing very expansive rugby and we spoke to Greg Woods and yeah, what, you could see what he was trying to do with the signings of like Dav Howells, uh, players like that. Um, they were sort of trying to go away from the traditional Gwent brutal rugby and try and play a bit more rugby. And I think with the amount of injuries they had in the camp and players coming back in, I thought they sort of reverted back to traditional Ebervale and against some teams like Cardiff or teams like that, they you have to have a bit more in your arsenal than just being brutal. Because when you have a team come down of half professional rugby players, they're just more skillful and they, they can get around a team that's purely physical. And of course, Ebervale's discipline let them down as well a lot um, early on. So I think that's something that Jason Strange will have to fi fix coming back in. And, um, yeah, another thing, Jason Strange, we know the type of rugby he likes to play. We've seen in his under-20s campaign how, how good that Wales team was and how, how good they were ball-playing as well. Scored a lot of tries in that campaign. And, obviously, his experience recently with St Helens as well. That can only benefit him, can only benefit Ebervale. And um, as disappointed as we are to see Greg Woods, obviously, lose his, his role with Ebervale, uh, it is really exciting to see Strange come in, coming back into the Premiership. Moving on to the uh, the next game in the in the league then, and Newport hosting Bridge End, another another game which we haven't seen so far this year, and another game which is a um, quarter final um, for the Prem Cup. So uh, Zach, I know you've seen uh, Newport play this uh, year. What are your thoughts on that one? Yeah, it's, it's quite funny that we've we've got a lot of games that are kind of going to be a preview to what we're going to see further in the season in the cup. Uh, but I think. Newport have really looked impressive recently. I've said it a lot in this podcast already, but I feel that they're on the up. They've got a clear idea of what they're doing, what brand of rugby they want to play, and it's very efficient. Uh, Bridge End haven't performed as well, I think, in in their conference as Newport have. So um, if Newport turn up, I think it'll be a tough day at the office for Bridge End, but I still wouldn't count Bridge End out. Yeah, it's hard to look past Newport, if I'm honest. You know, I've seen both sides play this year, and I watched them in a friendly, I think, right at the start of the year as well. But, um, but yeah, like Zach's mentioned, the brand of rugby Newport play and what Tyrone Morris has gone doing there is outstanding. And for this this level of rugby, it, it's brilliant to see, you know. I love the 9, 10, 12 combo they have there, you know, with Luke Green, Will Reed, Matt O'Brien. I think the three of them work excellently together. You know, like we mentioned earlier on, you know, the pack is solid. There's, there's some, you know, I think Josh Skinner's been outstanding this year. Ben Roach in the back row as well, you know, some big players in there. And yeah, you know, Bridgend haven't performed like they would have liked to this season. And, uh, you know, we, we've spoke to them and I think they are targeted in this league campaign, but I think they won't get a tougher start than this than Newport away. And, you know, I'd fancy Newport to come away with the victory. 
Yeah, and we know with Bridgend, obviously, the season before COVID, they um they lost quite a few games narrowly. Um, obviously winning most of the game, and then they were pipped at the end end a lot of those games. And I think that's something they'll be targeting this season is when they're when they're in those games right till the end, they got to have that sort of killer instinct and finish those games off. And uh, we know with, with the likes of Matthew Jones and players like that, they're players that you'd like to think uh, can be that little bit extra and can sort of be that sort of kill teams off. Yeah, it is a tough game for them playing playing a side like Newport, who are you know up there with Plundovery, the two best teams in the Premiership Cup. But I think Bridgend will really be targeting this game, and if they can get one over on Newport, um, first day of the season, uh, the team they're playing in the Premiership Cup. I think, yeah, that could send out a real message and give them a lot of confidence going going through to the league season now. Yeah, and I, I don't know if it is maybe a mentality struggle, the way they couldn't shout out games, you know, a couple of years ago. But like you say, you know, the signing of Matthew Jones, like the experience he brings in a pivotal role as well as a number 10 is massive. Like, you know, the likes of Zach O'Driscoll coming back to the club. You know, he's a big character, leader on the pitch on and off the pitch. You know, these boys are really going to have to step up in this league campaign and, and, and show their worth and, and why they were brought to the club. And I think they will. But, you know, the problem is, I think, what we've seen over the cup campaign is a lot of mix and match with the side. So it'll be interesting now to see what, what maybe Jabba thinks his, his first choice side is and what he goes with. And I think they'll just build from there. Yeah, because obviously if, if Bridgend are able to catch Newport out cold, uh, both teams haven't played in the last two weeks, but Bridgen might have that momentum going into this game from their late and uh, quite explosive wind, a win in, in, in their last game. If they manage to catch Newport out cold from the start and kind of put a few points past them and, and run the score up, I think they may have a chance of winning, but that's that's not the most likely outcome I see for this game. I think Newport, if they want to compete on all fronts and they, they're already in the quarterfinals of the Cup, I think they'll be clear favourites for this game. Yeah, I think I, I agree fully with that. I think to beat a side with the quality that Newport have, you do you kind of have to take the game yourself and sort of not not wait to see what Newport are going to bring to you because 10, 15 minutes in, you could be 20 points down easily to teams like Newport, Flandovery, Cardiff. So I think Bridgend, yeah, I fully agree. They'll have to they'll have to come out of the blocks flying. And you'd like to think with like Jabba and Matthew Jones and the coaching staff, I think they'll get their boys like properly fired up for this game. And I, I think it, it will be a really good game, to be fair. Obviously, a lot on the line so early on. Moving on then to uh, Pontefries against uh, Quinns, uh, the last game of um, this weekend coming then. And uh, this is an in- interesting one, isn't it? Because, um, yeah, Carmarthen and Quinns have gone a little bit under the radar, finishing in third. Um, probably not quite as good as Clendovery or Aberavon, but they do possess a lot of quality on their side. And... Pontefreeze as well. They possess a lot of quality on their side. Obviously, still hoping to to get that cut place. So, what are our early thoughts on that game? Yeah, um, come on, they're a very very solid side. You know, they don't maybe don't play the most exciting brand of rugby, but you know they, they're strong. I think the pack is excellent. They do have quality out behind. You know, Ponte. You know, they had another week off, but I think they'll be well up for it, you know, because they were going into that must-win game, obviously, against RGC, but, you know, at home now, Sardis, welcoming a side they haven't played all year, you know, and I think maybe the blend of, of youth and experience Pontiac is good, and, you know, there's some great youngsters coming through there, so I, it's a tough one to call, I think it, it could go either way, really, it depends who turns up on the day. Yeah, the thing with Ponty is, I, I've seen them play quite a lot this season, and the loss of, of Ben Burnell, who's been absolutely instrumental to the way they've been playing because they've got, I feel, a good blend of, as Tobias said, of youth and experience, but also of a solid pack and quite an expansive style of play uh, through their back line. I think Ben Burnell, who's been pivotal to the way they've been playing this this year, uh, when they lost him against Murtha, they were still in the game. They were only like one point behind or something. And even though they didn't have an outside flight, a half on the bench, which kind of was one of the reasons they lost by such a wide margin. I think without him, they're going to struggle for, for a few weeks because of the fact that he animates the play and he, he starts things off. He lights, he lights things up for them. So it'll be interesting. I, I think they'll be able to perform still because they've now had a few weeks without him and they've been able to train and, and kind of experiment things with, with new players in the mix. But it's going to be tough. And what do you think, maybe? Oh, go on, Ed. Yeah, do you think sort of that's the difference between a team like Pontefree that, that are obviously currently in, in fifth 
uh, in the, the Premiership Cup or fourth if they managed to beat RGC in that rearranged game. Do you think that's the difference from a side down there and a side like Llandovery that lost, lost their playmaker, Jack Maynard, who was instrumental in their season before COVID, and they've replaced him this season. You've obviously got James Garland, who's been around a few Premiership clubs, fantastic player. Christian Jones can play anywhere across the back line, and he's stepped into outside half. Do you think the difference between being top of the top of the league, top of the group, and being down there in fourth, fifth, is having a, a regular or experienced Premiership player step up into into your crucial positions, especially such as outside half, nine, eight players like that. I think it is because you could clearly see from the start of the season that Ponty sort of put a lot of eggs in the same basket. Maybe not all of them, but clearly giving the keys uh, to to Ben Burnell at, at eighteen, nineteen years old and. He really stepped up to that role and, and and took it seriously and performed really well and to the point where not not in terms of the way they played but in terms of like their scoring they became quite dependent on him and so maybe having a second option would have been would have been something not smart to do but I guess when you've got a player of the talent of Burnell you you can really count on him but now they've lost him it's it's going to be interesting to see how they adapt down the line. Yeah, and I think also it'll be interesting to see who, who wears that 10 shirt. Because obviously, I know Bonella has had the reins. Marsh has, has been the backup. But for that game up in RGC, you know, they named Diggy Bird in the starting side, who has got tons of premiership experience and, and is someone who can control tight games. So it, it'll be interesting to see what they go for. But I won't be surprised to see Diggy Bird in, in the side, if I'm honest. Just, you know, first game league campaign without their main choice 10. They just want someone there who can just steady the ship and and just control our back line as solid as he can. Yeah, and just a word on Bernal as well. How, how well he was playing, obviously, with the Blues injury crisis uh, this week for the Toulouse game, it wouldn't have been a surprise. You see the likes of Dan Fish, who's obviously a lot more experienced than Ben Bernal, but Dan Fish is in the squad. Obviously, you've got the likes of Tuvi in there as well. But if Bernal was still playing and playing at the level he was, it wouldn't have been a surprise to see him in with the Blues camp this week, would it? No, it wouldn't. But like we said, the, I think the experience of Dan Fish has gone, the way he's played this year has been outstanding. But I think Bernal, it's only a matter of time until he does get a chance at, at a regional level. You know, like, especially when he does come back from his injury and if he's played the way he has this season, there's no doubt the kids got quality and he could go far in, in Welsh rugby. Yeah, and obviously, I meant, quickly mentioned the Cardiff Rugby v Toulouse game. Uh, this weekend, and uh, that's had an effect on the Premiership because the Cardiff Llanelli games being called off with uh, so many Cardiff players, obviously the likes of Dan Fish being called up. Um, yeah, just just thoughts on how that game would have gone. Obviously, Llanelli finishing bottom of the, the Western Conference without winning a game. Cardiff, well, we know the strengths that they have in their team. Do you think? Um, do you think it's sort of annoying to Llanelli because they sort of they'll still be worrying about th- that game. Like they probably would have just wanted to get that game over and done with and sort of get back into the, get back into the swing of things. Yeah. I think maybe the problem is, you know, Clinetti, I'm not quite sure where that first win is going to come from in a minute. And obviously, you know, they would have targeted this first league game, but you know, the quality the Cardiff had, you know, it would have been a struggle and a big ask of Clinetti. Um, Yeah, they'll be gutted, but, you know, at the same time, I think, as a whole league, you've got to be happy for the boys, the Cardiff RFC boys getting an opportunity at such a high level. You know, there's so many youngsters, you know, like the likes of Beatham, Cam Winnett, um, Bruce Anstey, yes, and that, well, there's more than that. But obviously, these boys getting a chance to play international opposition, you know, European champions in Toulouse. It's only going to be good for them and the league as a whole. And it's great to see these boys getting an opportunity at that level. Especially as Toulouse uh, are going to come guns blazing, considering the loss they suffered this weekend. They want to, they're going to want to start their campaign very, very strongly. Obviously, defending their title. So, um, yeah, they're not going to be in for. I mean, playing Toulouse is never an easy game, but the, this weekend especially, I don't think Toulouse are going to be taking the game lightly. Whether Cardiff have a full squad or not, I think that's the least of their concerns. Yeah, I think it's a good opportunity for those young boys because a lot's been made of us obviously they are very inexperienced or some of no inexperience at regional level but when you're in that sort of bubble and you're trying to push forward to the first team there is very little opportunity because most games at regional rugby mean a lot 
like if you look at the sort of the games, every game's a, a must win game in regional rugby because of the position that the Welsh sides are in. Um, and I think to push through, you, you have to be something special because obviously these A games that are meant to prepare you for regional rugby, they're slightly better than the Premiership in terms of quality, but there's, there's no um, jeopardy on them. And I think to be thrown into a game like this, it can only, if they come out, if they lose by 50 points, it can only benefit them because they've played a game of regional rugby against the best side in the world. Yeah, yeah arguably. Actually. But best side in Europe based on last year's results and maybe the best side in the world, yeah, definitely. I mean, the great thing is that there's no pressure on these boys. You know, if, they, if they maybe had been drafted in to play a, um, a pro 14 game, you know, against whatever opposition it is, you know, they, they're drafted in because they've been chosen to play in, in a proper league campaign where they're expecting to get a result. You know, coming here, no one's expecting them to win now. There's no pressure on, you know, there's a bunch of young boys playing. Obviously, there's a few internationals going to be playing. But it's just a big experience. And the only thing to say, just go and enjoy. You know, it, it, hopefully it'll be a packed out arms park, massive crowd playing against, you know, some world-class players. It's only going to benefit, like you said, and I just hope they go out there and just enjoy themselves. Yes, yeah, stringing a few phases of play together, getting a few decent sequences against Toulouse, even if they do get battered. If they show some sort of opposition for 40, 60 minutes, it's, it, they're going to get plaudits for it. So it's a great, great opportunity. Yeah, and yeah, fair play to Cardiff Rugby as well, because they've really made a big deal about um, not being able to put out their first team and some of these players coming into the environment. And they've really pushed trying to, trying to get fans there to try and push the, these players on. And I think they've really embraced the fact that they'll be going in with a weaker team and that they'll really need um, big support there to, to push these boys on. Yeah, and, you know, these boys will never experience a crowd like hopefully they will now on Saturday. And, you know, obviously there's a bit of pressure with our Cardiff RFC shirt, but, you know, it's nothing like with, with the main Cardiff rugby shirt. And, you know, the big crowd there, they're only going to get behind these boys. There's no one going to be on their back. You know, and it's just a good experience for them. And, you know, and I think they'll do themselves the club and their families proud. Yeah, and another thing as well, I've seen some pictures of them in training this week and they're all training with a smile on their face. I don't think any of them are, are daunted by this. And I think I don't, you wouldn't be in, the, in a regional academy if you were, because I think there's pictures of Beetham and Johan Evans and obviously likes of Dan Fish as well. And they're all, they're all training with a smile on their face. And I think they're really, really up for this opportunity. All right, uh, that's a wrap for this uh, weekly preview review show. Thanks to our sponsors, Lekker Foods Co. as always. Um, and yeah, keep an eye on our social media, at Welsh Prem Pod. And we'll uh, have a few people uh, attending games this week as well, producing match reports and uh, updates as well. Uh, thanks, Zach, for joining us in uh, Adam's place this week. No, thank you very much. Hopefully I'll be back soon um, if Adam doesn't step up. And uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed this. Thank you for having me on. All right, and uh, thanks, for those, uh, thanks to those of you who are watching as well. Uh, thank you and goodbye.